Welcome everyone. This is the first lesson on probability from actuarialpath.com. And in this lesson we will learn about basics of set theory. You may wonder why do we need set theory for understanding probability. And in fact, to understand probability at a deeper level, we need a solid foundation in set theory. And that's why we're going to review some of the concepts in set theory. We're not going to go deep into set theory, but we will review it. I assume that you've learned set theory before. If you haven't, uh, please go ahead and pick up a book on set theory. First of all, what is probability? I think of probability as a scientific way to measure uncertainty. Let me write that down. Probability can be defined as a scientific way to measure uncertainty. All right, that's the keyword, uncertainty. Because you know life is random or uncertain. For instance, take a simple experiment of tossing a coin. When you toss a coin, you either have heads or tails. You have two possible outcomes. At any given time, you don't know what the outcome of the next coin toss will be. If you knew the outcome of the next coin toss, then you don't need probability to quantify the likelihood of, let's say, observing a tail. So probability gives you a tool to quantify the randomness or the uncertainty that we have. Let us give some examples of events someone may be interested in assigning a probability for. For example, an insurance claim could be filed by a policyholder. So if you're working in the insurance industry, you'd be interested in the probability of a claim being filed by a policyholder. Or if you're working in finance, you may wonder what is the probability that the S&P 500 index would lose at least 10% of its value in a given day? What is the probability that you win a lottery? What is the probability that you become the next president or prime minister of your country? There are so many events that we would like to assign a probability value or a numerical value as to how likely is that event to occur. So as we said, to understand probability at a deeper level, we need a good foundation or a solid foundation of set theory. And in this lecture, we will learn about some basic tools in set theory. What's a set? A set is a collection of objects. A simple definition. A collection of students in a classroom. A collection of actuaries in a company. So let's suppose that the set capital A denotes the set of letters in the English alphabet. So that set includes the elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, all the way up to Z. Okay. So this is one way to write a set. Note that I used uppercase letter A to denote the set, and it is accustomed to use uppercase letters to denote sets. And I used lowercase letters to denote the elements of the set. And in fact, I can say the letter Z, which is right here, is an element of the set A. And the Greek letter epsilon is used to mean an element of or a member of. So Z is a member of set A. Let's say the set B. B 
be the letters and the word actuary. So let me write the word actuary here. The set B contains the letters A, C, I also see a T, U, and the next letter is an A, but I already have A in the set, so I don't need to rewrite the letter A again. So I'm going to skip that. R, and finally Y. Okay, those are the elements of the set B. Let me give one more example again. The set of positive real numbers. So let's say R plus be the set of positive real numbers. And that is equal to the set of numbers between 0, not including 0, to infinity. The difference between these three sets is the following. The first two examples, that one and that one, are countable sets. I can count the members of these sets. And this example is an example of an countable set. Okay, So a set could be countable or uncountable. And furthermore, a countable set can be classified into finitely countable or infinitely countable. Finitely countable sets examples could be these two. Set A is finitely countable. It's finite. Set B is finite. Another example of finitely countable set could be, let's say, set D, which contains the numbers between 0, 1, 2, all the way to 10. Infinitely countable set, for example, could be the set of natural numbers, or the set of counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to infinity. Infinitely countable numbers. In fact, a set is countable if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between that set and the set of natural numbers. If you can form a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of natural numbers and any given set, then that set is a countable set. The empty set. Empty set or the null set is a set that contains no elements. Okay? This set has no elements. And the notations we use for empty set or null set is the following. We could have empty braces or the symbol denotes the empty set or the null set. Let's say we have two sets A and B. And we say that A is a subset of B if every element in A is also in B. And A is also in B. So that's the concept of subset right here. For example, let's say the set A contains the elements X, Y, and Z. And a simple example, let's say B contains the elements W, X, Y, and Z. As you can see, every element in A, X, Y, or Z, are also included in B. So therefore, we can say A is a subset of B. And the notation for that is the following. A is a subset of B. 
In fact, let's go ahead and list all the subsets of the set A, which is X, Y, and Z. Let's go ahead and do that. So the set containing X is a subset of A because every element in the set is also in that set, the set A. The set containing Y is also a subset of A. The set containing Z is also a subset of A. The set containing X and Y is a subset of A. So is the set containing X and Z, the set which has the elements Y and Z is also a subset of A, and the set containing X, Y, and Z, which is the set A itself, is a subset of the set A, because every element in the set X, Y, Z, which contains X, Y, Z, is also an element in set A. And finally, the set, which is the empty set, is also a subset of A. And I want you to remember that the empty set is a subset of every set. It's a subset of every set. So the subsets of the set A are the following, and they are 8 in number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In fact, the number of subsets of any set which has 3 elements is 8. The number of subsets of a set which has n elements is 2 to the power of n. For instance, this set has three elements, and 2 to the power of 3 is 8. If you have a set which has 10 elements, the number of subsets of that set is 2 to the power of 10. Remember that. Equal sets. We say two sets let's say A and B, are equal if A is a subset of P and also B is a subset of A. Example is let's say I have set A which contains the members 2, 4, and 6. Let's say I have set B which contains the same members 2, 4, and 6. And you can see that a is a subset of B, because every element in A is also in B. At the same time, B is a subset of A, because every element in B is also in set A. Okay, I'm going to close this lecture by uh, talking about intersections of sets and unions of sets. I'm going to start with intersections. intersection of sets. Let's say we have two sets A and B and the intersection of those two sets A intersection B that's the notation we use for intersection of two sets A intersection B contains the elements that are in A as well as B so is a set, A intersection B is a set that contains elements in A and B, or I can say in both A and B. A quick example, let's say the set A contains the elements 2, 4, and 6, and the set B contains the elements, let's say, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. What is the intersection of the sets A and B? A 
intersection B. A and B. Intersection somehow means and. A intersection B contains the elements. Look, now 2 is in A, but it is not in B, so it cannot be in the intersection. But 4 is in A as well as B, so it is a member of the intersection. 6 is in A, it is also in B, so 6 is a member of the intersection. And 4 and 6 are the two members of the intersection of A and B for this example. If I use Venn diagram, let's say this is A, the set A, and let's say this is set B. The elements in A are 2, 4, and 6. I'm writing 4 and 6 in this overlapping region because 4 is a member of A as well as B. And 6 is a member of A as well as B. And the rest, 5, 7, and 8 are in B, but not in A. The intersection of A and B is this region of overlap. Unions of sets. Two sets, let's say I have two sets A and B. And A union B, A union B, which is denoted by that, is a set that contains elements in A or B. Set that contains the elements in either A or B. So a union could mean or. Just like an intersection meant an end. Let's use the same example. A has elements 2, 4, and 6. B has elements 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. The union between A and B, which is A union B, or A or B, contains the elements 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And in the Venn diagram, that is A, and this is B. So we have um, 2 here, we have 4, 6, and then 5, 7, 8 here. Let me close this. So the union of A and B is the whole region. That's the union of A and B.